You guys have been asking crazy to create a tutorial on the awesome compositing techniques from the Coldplay Up and Up video clip. So here it is. And even more exciting, everything is done inside Premiere Pro. Now there's a lot we have to go through, so let's not waste time and get right into it. Jordy here for Cinecom.net and welcome to another exciting Premiere Pro tutorial. We're going to blend this sea turtle here in with a clip that I've shot across the street. We're going to key it out and try to match the motion of that sea turtle also together with the shot here that we've created. And this is definitely not going to be an easy task in Premiere. It would be more convenient in After Effects, but I know how much you guys love Premiere tutorials. It's the majority of the audience here at the channel. So let's get right into it. I've got an empty sequence with the two clips, the sea turtle, which is swimming, and then below that we've got the shot here that I've made across the street, and it was just coming a train, so that's why all these cars here are standing still. Perfect to get some motion and to blend that sea turtle in. Now there are a couple of things that you have to pay attention to before starting with this. You kind of have to analyze your stock footage shot. By the way, everything can be downloaded. You can find a link to it in the description below, so that you can also work together with me in this tutorial on the same clips. Now, when looking at this shot, there are three things to pay attention to. First of all is the movement, and uh, as you can see, the turtle is kind of swimming sideways. So that's also why in this shot here, I was kind of walking sideways. Then the next thing is lighting, and uh, the lighting is coming from the back of that sea turtle somewhere here in the corner up left. We can also see a shadow here on the right side of the turtle, and that's the same thing how I've aligned the sun in this shot as well. It's coming here from the upper left corner, and again you can see that coming back in the shadow of the cars as well. And then finally is the lens. This is, uh, I believe it was probably shot on a GoPro, it's a very wide angle lens, so that's also again the same thing that I've done here in this shot, it was shot on a very wide angle lens. And that's a very good basis to start with to match these two shots together. So the next thing I want to do is kind of cut out this turtle, and this is definitely not going to be an easy part. We can't just key it out, because uh, if we are going to select a blue color, it will also kind of remove the turtle. So we're going to use a different keying technique, but before we do that, we are first going to add a warp stabilizer on this shot, because there is a bit too much movement. This is going to be pretty hard to match that with the shot that I've made. So let's search for the warp stabilizer, it's right here. Just drag that onto that clip and it will kind of start analyzing the background. Just wait a couple of minutes until it's completed. And your effects controls here, by the way, you can see how far it is. So it's uh, calculating the time, how much it takes. And there we go, it's stabilized. And if we're going to take a look now, it looks a bit better to work with. So, so then the next thing that you want to do is mask out the majority of the stuff in this shot. So we definitely want to get rid of those rocks here on the bottom, also this very bright highlight, which is going to be very hard to key out. So we're going to isolate that turtle. So just uh, from your opacity here, oh, by the way, make sure that you are in the beginning of your shot. We're going to start here. And then just take the pen tool and draw a mask around that turtle. And you can be a little rough with your mask, but not too rough, because like I said before, it's going to be pretty hard to key this baby out. So the more you can mask out, the better it's going to work. Something like this would do it. And now we have to track this mask as well. And if you've been following our tutorials in the past, you know that we love to use these uh, tracking options here, but unfortunately it's going to be very hard to kind of track this mask when you are up close like this. So we're going to do it manually. I'm going to create a keyframe for the mask path. By the way, you can always try to press the play button here and see what it does. Let me just show you guys, let me just do that. As you can see here, the mask is already cutting into the sea turtle, so this is not a good idea, undo. We're going to have to do it manually, I'm sorry for that. So the best way to kind of do this is by just selecting your mask here. I'm going to stand in my program monitor and with my scroll wheel on my mouse, I can kind of go one frame forward each time. From the middle, I can just kind of move the mask forward or backwards or whatever position that you want to go through. And sometimes you might want to adjust one of these points here as well. Like as you can see here, we are revealing a lot of the, of the blue stuff. So just remove that. You want to make sure to remove as much as the background as you can. This is going to take a while, definitely, if you are going to do an entire video clip. By the way, a lot of the stuff from the Coldplay video clip was rotoscoped, and that's a technique inside After Effects. You can search for that on YouTube if you like, so perhaps we will do a tutorial about that in the future. 
Let me know in the comments if you would like to get a tutorial on rotoscope. That's actually this technique here, but then in After Effects and After Effects has some better tools to do this, some more fluent tools. And we're done with keyframing the mask around the sea turtle. And as you can see, I'm really isolating it. I'm trying to get as close as possible with my mask around the turtle. So what I want to do next now is get rid of the blue that is still around this guy. So the convenient way we would think to key that out with the ultra key, but unfortunately the sea turtle is way too blue, so the keying effects don't work that well. So we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to work with the Lumetri color. You can see it here on the right side. If you can't see this panel, then head over to Window and from here select the Lumetri color and that will reveal this panel. And you want to go into the HSL secondary because from here we can kind of select that blue color. So just take the color picker here to set the color and try to select some kind of a blue here that we would like to remove. And I'm also just going to zoom in here so that we can see it a little bit better of what we're doing. Now to see what we are selecting here, I'm going to enable the mask here down below. And everything that is blue now or that is in color is what I've selected and the gray that is the stuff that we're going to leave alone. Now we can fine tune a bit more here in the U saturation and lightness to select more specifically the edge around the sea turtle. So perhaps you can do that, perhaps change that U a bit so that we are not biting too much into that sea turtle or with the saturation. But this is definitely not easy and I also don't believe that we can isolate the sea turtle very perfectly in the shot. I think we have to do it with this. You can also blur that a little bit to kind of feather these edges so that it's not so hard once we are going to remove this. When your color selection is done, then just deselect the mask option here. And what I'm gonna do now is kind of make this color easier to key out. So I'm going to change that color to green. So everything you have in your power, just make that as much as green as possible. Also here, bring the tint to that side. Just do everything in your power to make that as green as possible. Something like this would do it. And now we have something better to select and key out. So let's head over to the effects controls again and search for that ultra key. Drag that onto that clip. And instead of selecting the blue now, of course, we will select the green over here. So just take that color picker, click on the green and bang, it's already gone. But we're going to tweak that a little bit more. So head into the matte generation and play with these settings so that we can kind of remove as much as possible from the green without going into that sea turtle. So I'm going to decrease the transparency. You can already see what that kind of does here. Same thing with the highlights here too. Look here at its tail where it's definitely going away as I'm bringing this down. The shadows too, and that is more here, the darker parts of the green, as you can see. Look at the right side of that turtle. Then the pedestal as well. Just play around with that setting and see what it does here. Something like this would do it. And I believe that we got it now. We still have this edge around the sea turtle and that is something that we can easily remove here in the matte cleanup. Just, just go into there and right here you can find the choke option and just increase that choke to kind of bite into the edge of that sea turtle and so we can remove that. There we go, this should do it. We've done the keying of the sea turtle. This was probably the hardest part to do. Now we can go into the color correction to kind of match the colors of the sea turtle a bit more with the shot on the back. But perhaps we might want to adjust the colors first of that shot. So let me just select the street shot here and uh, let me just do some basic things here from the basic color corrections. Uh, I'm going to increase the shadows a bit more, uh, perhaps bring down the highlights, increase the contrast again. By the way, if you want to learn more about doing color corrections inside Premiere, we've got a complete tutorial about that starting from basic color corrections to the more advanced stuff to really make your subject pop out. And you can find a link to it in the description below again. So something like this would do it, already looks a lot better. The sky is coming out great. So now we want to do the exact same thing with this sea turtle and match that with the shot behind it. Now in your effects controls here, you can see that we already have the Lumetri color here. I'm just going to copy paste that so that we can have it twice near and I'm going to reset the copy it Lumetri color effect. So with having this here selected, we now have all the controls reset it, but we still retain that secondary color correction that we've done in the beginning. So let's take out the blue. So that means adding a lot of warmth onto that sea turtle. You wanna be careful with sliding the temperature slider because you wanna make sure that your highlights are not getting orange, but that they kinda stay white. So therefore you might wanna go into the color wheels as well here and perhaps push more warmth into the shadows and also the midtones, but 
push back a little bit blue in those highlights to keep those whites right over here. So something like this would definitely do it. There's still a lot of saturation. So I'm going to go back to the basic correction and decrease the saturation. It was getting a bit too warm. Something like this would do it. The exposure is also a bit too much like that. Try to look at the shadows too. We've got pretty hard contrast in the street shot. So I'm going to decrease the shadows here. And I see that I've pushed a bit too much yellow or orange into those shadows. Let's bring that back just a tiny bit like this. Now it kind of matches a little bit better with the backgrounds. Something like this would do it. What we're going to do is kind of add this overall color grading on these two shots together as well. And that will kind of match them more together too. But that's for after the short break. Need music that is up to the standards of Hollywood film composers but don't have the budget to spare? Well, that's where Premium Beat's incredible library of film music comes in. Covering a huge range of styles from classic orchestral to contemporary synth, Premium Beat has the professional quality royalty-free music you need to get your project to the next level. Here's your curated film music selection. Link in the description below. Welcome back, folks. From my project panel right here, I'm going to click on the new item button and select adjustment layer. Press OK and drag that on top of your two clips. And I'm also going to set this to the same length here, just delete that part. And on this adjustment layer here, we're going to do another color correction. And uh, you can give this any look that you want. Uh, let me just go quickly into the creative tab and select here any of these uh, LUTs or presets. You can also go into the basic corrections or into the color wheels to kind of give it a more drastic tint, something like this, increase the highlights a bit more. But what we're doing now is adding this look on these two clips at the same time by adding this adjustment layer on top of these two clips. And I kind of want to go for this retro look because we're going to add a grain on top of that too. You can already see it here in my footage here. Got an, we've got some film grain, but that's for the last step. We're going to blend that in too. I'm trying to add more contrast, but still retaining some of the detail here in this truck. So might want to increase that blacks a bit more, bring down the exposure. Something like this would do it. As you can see now, the sea turtle fits in a lot better by doing this overall grading onto the two shots. There's one last thing that we have to do, and it's very important as well, and that is kind of matching the motion of these two shots. So the sea turtle has a kind of motion, and we've already limited that with the warp stabilizer here, but me walking on the street also has a particular motion. Now, ideally, you want to do some kind of a motion tracking here, but since we are in Premiere, we don't have that much options. So we're going to do this a bit more manual. I'm going to grab the sea turtle, click on the motion and kind of drag that clip to a starting position where you want that sea turtle to start. And that's going to be somewhere right here on the left side. You can also increase the uh, scale if you want to or decrease that more if you like so. And we're going to take a look at what kind of happens here in the street shot. And as I'm starting, I'm kind of going up with my camera here a little bit, as you can see here at the truck. So I'm going to create a keyframe for the sea turtle here for the position and look for the highest point where I'm kind of going up with my camera somewhere like that. And now what I'm going to do with that sea turtle is bring that down a little bit so that it kind of flows with my motion. Then next I'm going down a little bit until here. And now I will push that sea turtle up again, but also make sure to look at that sea turtle because it's moving a little bit too. Now what you can do is also add extra motion. Right here, the sea turtle is kind of pushing his arms down. So at that point, it would be convenient if the sea turtle will go up as well. So what I'm gonna do here at this point, where it's kind of pushing itself, I'm going to create a new keyframe, go a little bit forward and kind of push that sea turtle up. Now, since this here is happening, a natural reaction would be that I'm also adjusting my camera motion. So I'm going to stand on the exact same point here where the sea turtle is going to start by swimming upwards. And I'm going to create a keyframe for the street clip here as well for the position. And as it's kind of going upwards, I'm also going to move my camera up like that. Now we're kind of getting this black bar because of course the clip wasn't larger than this area. So just scale that up a little bit so that we have some more headspace. 
and that movement matches a bit better now. But there's still one important thing that we have to do, and that is something that I'm always hammering on while making tutorials, and that is to make smooth keyframes. And that will smoothen out the motion as well and make it a bit more realistic. So just select the keyframes, right click and go to temporal interpolation and just select a bezier. And this will kind of start more smoothly and also end more smoothly. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the sea turtle. Also select those keyframes, right click on them, say temporal interpolation and bezier. And now the movement is a bit more smooth. And perhaps the sea turtle is going a bit too high here. So you want to adjust that. And this is something that you can continue doing. Just look at the motion of the sea turtle and the motion of your shot and try to match them somehow. You can also create extra motions by animating the sea turtle and your shot. And definitely by adding these extra motions here into it, you can make it look more realistic. But again, it's pretty hard to do in Premiere since we don't have any motion trackers. And this looks pretty okay now. This is also, again, a process that takes some time. If you're going to download the project file, you'll get the original one that I've created, where I spent a bit more time into this motion. But I believe that you get the ID right here. It's, again, the same thing with the keying as well. You want to go back and forward the entire time, move your keyframes around to look for the correct motion. Now, one last thing that I want to add in here before we're going to add the grain to this shot is uh, also add a glitch in the autofocus. And uh, with that, I kind of mean that we have to focus on the sea turtle and then it kind of pushes back and forward as the sea turtle moves, which is a very common artifact, which will make it look a bit more realistic as well. Again, head over to your effects library and search for blur. And you could find right here the Gaussian blur. And just select any point here in your timeline. Just drag that Gaussian blur to both the sea turtle and to the street. And let's start with having the street more out of focus. So add a little bit of blur to it, something like 10 or so like that. And I'm going to create a keyframe for that. Then go to your sea turtle clip. And also here for the Gaussian blur, make sure to set its keyframe for zero as you want to make sure that this one here is sharp at this point. Go a bit further in time. And right here now I'll make the sea turtle blurred out like that. So make that 10. And this switch here, I'm going to make the blurriness now zero. So I'm doing the opposite thing here. And what kind of happens now, I'm kind of doing a focus pull from the sea turtle to the back, as you can see right here. This is kind of that autofocus glitch. We're going to make sure that it comes back to the sea turtle. So just go a little bit further in time again. I've got the street selected here. So I'm going to set the blurriness now to 10 again. So we're going from 10 to zero to 10. And the same thing for the sea turtle here on that same point. I want to bring that back to zero. So now we're going with the focus to the back and then it comes again to the front. And if you like, so you can kind of copy paste this as well and make that happen another time. So it's definitely clear that there's a glitch in the autofocus, something like this. And this also again makes it a bit more blend in because the camera effects are reacting both on the sea turtle and the background. And finally, what I want to do is that grain effect, also that here you can find in the project file if you're going to download that. Just drag that on top of everything like so. Select the grain effect, head over to your opacity, and from here I'm going to set the blend mode to the vivid light. It will work very subtle, but it will add kind of this uh, old film look to it, this, this grain, which is again on top of everything, so that way it kind of matches these two shots more together as well. And that was it for this pretty long tutorial, but I also hope that you've learned some new techniques inside Premiere Pro. Thank you so much for watching. Again, there's a link in the description below to download this project file. And as always, stay creative.